Today we're going to be taking a look at the DC Vault, a museum in a book, featuring rare collectibles from the DC Universe, so stay tuned. Hey guys, welcome back to Come Again TV, where all geek culture collides, and if you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future videos. Today on the show, we're taking a look at the DC Vault, a museum in a book featuring rare DC collectibles from the DC Universe. As you can see here, we it's a it's a hard hardbound book, and inside it's got um, not your standard standard binder, but it still has spiral rings holding everything inside. You have a nice image of the Alex Ross designed cover of the Justice League. You got the Flash, Aquaman, Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, uh, the Atom, Captain Marvel, Shazam, Red Tornado, Green Arrow, Martian Manhunter, Plastic Man, Hawk Woman, Elongated Man, Zatanna, Black Canary, and I'm not sure who that is in the background. Uh, Martin Pasco, forward by Paul Levitz. What an absolutely marvelous book. It gives the lucky reader a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to relive the most exciting eras in comicdom. Stan Lee. Explore the hidden treasures of the DC Universe in this remarkable collection. In 1935, popular culture was forever transformed when DC Comics published the first book of all new, all original comic material. To the delight of millions of readers everywhere, the modern comic book was born. And from its pages came leaping and exhilarating cast of characters. Now the DC Vault unlocks DC Comics' most fascinating secrets and deeply buried treasures presenting a colorful array of historic and never-before-published memorabilia, including early sketches, covers, memos, press materials, and much more. From a working reproduction of a, of a 1942 Junior Justice Society of America decoder to the original pencils and inks for a Wonder Woman comic book, this dazzling chronicle contains more than 25 plastic-encased archival pieces for readers to pull out and examine all while learning about the artists writers and world famous superheroes that make up the DC universe whether you've been collecting Superman comics since the 1930s or have just discovered the amazing Sandman saga you'll re you'll revel in this vibrant treasury Martin Paskey is a veteran writer and editor for an array of media, including comics, nonfiction, and live and animated television. His work in comics has been most closely associated with DC, and he has helped translate many comic book properties to the small screen, including Batman the Animated Series, for which he won a 1993 Daytime Emmy Award. Paul Levitz entered the comics industry in 1971 as the editor-publisher of The Comic Reader, the first mass circulation comics fanzine. He, be, he began contributing to DC as a free, freelance writer and went on to write most of the classic DC characters. Lovitz joined the editorial staff of DC in 1973 as an assistant editor and shifted to the business side in 1980. He has been DC's president and publisher since 2002. Copyright of the DC Vault is 2008 by DC Comics. All characters, names, and related elements are trademarks of DC Comics, all rights reserved. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look inside. I will tell you guys, I've had this for a while. Uh, it's a little beat up. It's been in storage. Um, it's been packed away. It's been in basements, all that. Uh, so it's not in the best condition. 
it pages were stuck together from water damage whatever uh, but some, the most important stuff is still intact so as you can see here you have all an all-american publication DC a Superman publication DC uh, all, all kinds of different uh, DC Comics logos there. You have a look inside the Batcave during the uh, 1960s. Two different Batmobiles. You have an image there of Wonder Woman kicking some uh, Greco Roman guard or whatever. So let's go ahead and um, we'll skip through all this other stuff. As you can see, pictures of Superman, whatnot. Uh, we'll skip through some of the, a lot of this stuff and go straight into some of the uh, collectible reproductions. Vintage Batman style mask. See, you put your string in there and tie it off, and you'd be able to wear it like a mask. Uh, the nose was cut out so that you you know it didn't damage the uh, damage the mask at all whenever you put it on, and that's what the back would look like. I believe it, you would cut it out from the comic. So that's pretty cool. And it says here, Batman mask circa 1943. This promotional mask was created for the Philadelphia Record newspaper. On the back, it announces the Batman and Robin daily and Sunday newspaper strips. All right, we have here Wonder Woman from Sensation Comics. Uh, it was originally a button. Uh, the Wonder Woman button, this rare button reproduced here as a sticker, was offered in Sensation Comics number 5, May 1942. So, guess I could peel the back off here and stick the sticker somewhere, but I'll leave it as is. Keep it protected there. We have a Justice Junior Justice Society of America decoder circa 1942 to 1944. I'm not super familiar of how these decoders work. Um, <laughs> you got Johnny Thunder, Hawkman, Superman. Batman, The Flash, Green Lantern, Wonder Woman, Adam, Dr. Fate, Starman, Spectre, Dr. Midnight, Sandman, and then back to Johnny Thunder. Uh, turn the small disc underneath until the code character appears in the window above. For example, turn until you come to the code Wonder Woman. Hold both discs firmly so neither will move and turn to reverse side. Note that this Wonder Woman follows the same automatic procedure for each of the 12 other codes. Alright, so it's set on Johnny Thunder now. So as Johnny Thunder, each of these symbols represents one of these letters. And then if we turn it to, say, um, Batman, the codes will represent a different letter. Uh, the Junior Justice Society made its debut in an ad in All-Star Comics number 14, December 1942 to January 1943. Readers could send in 15 cents and receive a membership kit that included a welcome letter from Wonder Woman, a badge, this cardboard decoder, and four-page war bond comic, and a membership certificate seen on page 51. 
so we'll put that back in we'll find another there we go All right, Superman Tim Store booklet, March 1944. The Superman Tim Club was sponsored by clothing stores from 1942 to 1950. A monthly 16-page giveaway magazine featured new articles and activities. All right, so here we have what's happening in this store. If you can't read the secret code, ask for a membership card at your Superman Tim store and learn how. So I'm not sure. I don't think the uh, Justice Society decoder will uh, work with this. I think you'd have to actually get a Superman decoder. Some nice vintage style artwork. Very cool. Right. Here we go. Superman's Buddy Booklet, 1954. These are printer proofs, also known as blue lines, for a booklet that was packaged with a Superman children's costume produced by Funtime Playware. So, yes, Superman's Buddy. Uh, um, it says Jimmy... I don't think that's supposed to be Jimmy Olsen, though. Uh, it seems a little young to be Jimmy Olsen. Um, nice comic. Not bad. I wish I still had my... Adam West Batman autograph from back in the 80s when he went and toured the American malls and uh, autograph pictures for people. Uh, I had it for the longest time and during several moves I lost it. Wish I still had it. it is very cool meeting Adam West. From the Batcave, best wishes Batman and Robin. Little postcard looks like perhaps in an effort to bolster sagging sales of the Batman titles in the late 1950s DC created it this promotional postcard featuring the Cape Crusader Brave and the Bold, number 43, August, September, 1962. Cover pencils by Joe Kubert. Nice little design of Hawkman on the cover. Pretty cool. This was vintage, vintage Hawkman. Got Mr. Mitzaplik there and what appears to be Lex Luthor. And then you got Brainiac, Parasite, and I can't really tell who that is. Superman Land Plans, two sided. Neil Adams created these elegant drawings of planned attractions 
for a Superman Land amusement park, including Smallville, a rocket trip to Krypton, and a tour of the Fortress of Solitude. The planned site, a town in southern Illinois called, what else, Metropolis. The project was never greenlit. That would have been pretty cool. Uh, but now, Metropolis does have the Superman Museum. And they do ha hold the uh, Superman celebration every year. I believe it's in July or August. I've been wanting to go for quite some time. But it's right during the height of my uh, work season. So I can never quite get away. And it's about three, maybe four hours south of us. Right. National Periodical Publications Incorporated. Superman DC National Comics. Frequently Asked Questions Letter early 1970s everything or at least almost everything the average reader would want to know about DC Comics and its characters was summarized on this two-page letter sent to a young fan named Paul Lovitz Shazam is coming Shazam cellophane button the launch of DC's new Shazam comic in 1972 was heralded with this 4-inch ceramic button reproduced here as a sticker. That's pretty cool. I always like Shazam. Ragman number 1. Original artwork by Joe Kubert. August... September 1976. Rory Reagan was a fascinating character scripted by Robert Kaniger and illustrated by Kubert, who worked in a Gotham City pawn shop called Rags and Tatters. After criminals killed his father, he discovered a box of multicolored rags that magically jumped onto his skin and transformed him into the Ragman. Uh, for those of you who remember, Ragman was a central character of the Arrow TV series uh, last season. I believe it was last season. No, it was... I think it was two seasons ago, maybe? It was during the Damien Dark storyline, which I think was two seasons ago. Reading is Strength, a Wonder Woman bookmark. Uh, Wonder Woman bookmark 1987. Wonder Woman did her part to promote literacy with this laminated bookmark. DC Moving Notice 1980. This fold-out notice was created to announce the company's new address at 666 Fifth Avenue in New York City. Say, have you heard the news? News? What news? The big news about DC Comics. I hope it's nothing serious. Serious? It sure is. DC is moving. That's right. As of December 3rd, our new address is 666 Fifth Avenue, New York, New York, 10103. It's just across the street from our old offices. Our new general phone number is 212-484-2800. See you there. 
why am I always the last one to know these things? <laughs> pretty cool. I'm not going to unfold it all the way. Um, but that's pretty cool. DC Crisis Items, 1984-85. DC's Crisis on Infinite Earth storyline was a huge event. And it also generated a huge amount of paperwork. Among the stacks of memos and letters from DC writers and editors were these notes. A request, a biggie, to kill Supergirl, and a list of Crisis characters and dimensions. That's pretty much how they decided to kill off Supergirl in Crisis on Infinite Earths. Additional DC Crisis items in 1984-85 enclosed are two memos sent during the resolution of the Crisis on Infinite Earth storyline. One, an update on the pivotal villain of the series, the Monitor. The other, a pondering on where to place a post-crisis Jonah Hex. you want to read it feel free to pause my throat's starting to get a little dry guys <laughs> uh, before editing this video is currently at 24 minutes 25 seconds History of DC Universe Poster 1987. The poster was created for Graffiti Designs History of the DC Universe Hardcover Edition. Also printed inside the book as a trifold page featuring over 50 artists' work and signatures. Readers could send in a postcard to request one of the limited run of 10,000 copies of the poster. start here and we'll go over the Trinity See if I can get this folded back up the way it Alright. And I think we'll end with this one here. Yeah, that'd be a good place to end it. Wonder Woman number 63, June 1992. Original. Original cover pencils and cover inks by Brian Boland. So here we have the original pencil drawing. Of course, not original copy, but that's the pencil drawing. And here is the inked version. Nice image of Wonder Woman holding her lasso of truth.
And since it's Christmas time, we'll go ahead and take a look at this. We'll end it with this one here. DC Comics Holiday Card, 1996. Alex Rocks. Alex Ross painted this Christmas scene of Superman and Lois Lane flying over Metropolis. I've always really liked Alex Ross's artwork. It just pops off the page. Very, very nice. So there you have it guys, a summarized look at the DC Vault by Martin Pasco, forward by Paul Levitz, a museum and a book featuring rare collectibles from the DC Universe. Uh, my mom picked this up for me several years ago. Um, I've, I've glanced through it a time or two. I have not read the whole thing. Uh, that's going to be... That's something I'll do another time. But I have looked over all the different, uh, all the different, um, special inclusions in there that we just took a look at today. So, if you enjoyed this video, guys, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future videos. I'm Shannon for Comagen TV. Take care.